Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, February the 21st. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on. We do have a little bit of economic data across the pond, not so much here in the United States, but across the pond, we're starting to get in the flash estimates. And these are the most important, are pretty close to being the most important PMI numbers that we get across the pond. Here in the United States is the Institute of Supply Management or the ISM across the pond. And in the United States, we get flash PMI and flash uh, estimates, but Ours is a bit of a lagging indicator because we get the ISM. So, on to across the pond with the flash estimates. We got French flash manufacturing PMI coming in at 56.1, expected to be 58.1, lower than expected there. But remember, any of these numbers, anything above 50 with the PMI numbers is expansion in the economy. Anything below 50 is contraction. So, we do have expansion, albeit is not it's not as extensive as we were expecting. And then we got the French flash services. PMI came in at 57.9, lower than the expected 59.1. German flash manufacturing PMI came in line with expectations at 63.6. Flash services PMI for the German region came in at uh, 55.3, expected to be 56.8. European region flash manufacturing came in at 58.5, lower than the expected 59.2. Flash services PMI for the European region came in at 56.7, expected to be 57.7. So all of these PMI numbers lower than expected. Above 50 showing expansion, which is good, but you know lower than expected, not quite getting the uh, traction we were expecting in the overall economy. Then um, the uh, Great Britain's unemployment rate uptick to 4.4%, expected to be 4.3%. And then on to the United States, of course, we got our flash manufacturing and services PMIs as well. Although these aren't really robust numbers, to say the least, the ones that we're not going to necessarily look at, but came in for manufacturing at 55.9, expected to be 55.4, and services came in at 559 uh, nine as well, expected to be 53.6. And existing home sales came in lower than expected at 5.38 million, expected to be 5.61 million. So lower than expected there. So not a great day for economic data across the pond, nor necessarily here in the United States. Nothing really to write home about. We do have FOMC minutes coming out later on today at two o'clock Eastern. So keep your eyes out for that. All right. Uh, the lackluster economic data so far today, uh, not really affecting the equities. We'll see here in a little bit. But we do have crude oil down slightly on the day by about uh, 23 cents. You know, we were talking about all of these charts are really looking messy. We're only getting real support and resistance in a tight range. Support on the 50-day moving average, supporting today and yesterday. Resistance on the trend channel that I have drawn in here. Uh, but the market, pretty sloppy, not giving any great indication as the direction. You know, we were hoping to see maybe confirmation to this way or, you know, breaking this trend and just showing it as a pause. Not still getting any directionality. We'll have to wait to the end of the day to see if this starts looking more like a confirmation to a uh, top and maybe rolling over. All right, gold yesterday, a big slam down yesterday we were talking about. Guess people aren't worried about inflation anymore. <laughs> that didn't last long. But yesterday, big sell-off. Today, bit of consolidation above the 78 Fibonacci level. Uh, you know, we got tweezer tops here uh, across the board, really. 
So this line in the sand of uh, basically 1350 is going to be a lot of resistance. So uh, 1360, we could even call it. Um, <clears throat> and this uh, Fibonacci level right here at 1322 is going to act as support. So a uh, lot of room to move, but we've kind of covered that whole range in a matter of a couple of days, it feels like. So uh, gold... I'm bearish on, I don't think we're going to really see hyperinflation or anything like that. If anything, we might see a little stagflation, but I don't think that that really is going to drive gold too much higher. It could, but uh, not at least in the near term. All right, on to Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin basically giving up the uh, rally they saw yesterday, uh, giving up over 1,200 points right now, but still above 10,000, which is a real key psychological level for bulls and bears that are going to be battling over. We've got the bonds off slightly by about 10 points today. Real consolidation going nowhere. Good opportunity maybe for an iron condor. It still has pretty decent implied volatility. So um, something to throw around that. I don't see it really going a whole lot of anywhere unless we see a major correction in the stock market. But I think we've already seen that 10% correction that should hold us off for a little while. We've got the VIX coming off after it kind of topped out yesterday. And that's because we're seeing equities move higher. Dow Jones industrial average up about 80 some points off of its lows or off of its highs since we started this just a couple of minutes ago. I think it was about 50 uh, points higher at the Dow Jones still in positive territory by about 80 points. Yesterday, we were talking about this kind of looking like a topping pattern. Then late in the day, it started turning into a continuation pattern. We needed to see some correction to get below this uh, wick here on the doji here at the low. Not seeing that. It looks actually like it's trying to push to the top and test this trend channel to the upper band. That's where I think it's going to go. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that correction. We're also seeing yesterday it looked like it was a confirmation. Today, not getting that. It's a pretty much inside day, but... You know, I'd like to see a little bit more follow through. It just seems like we're really getting just consolidation. And we kind of got to look at this 30 minute chart. These are 30 minute candles on a 10 days uh, section here. It's actually closer to 15 days, I think. Now that I look at it. But you can see not quite inside days across the way, but it sure feels like inside days. Today feels like an inside day, although it's kind of an outside day as well. But, you know, we're really just kind of winding up, waiting to see what direction this market wants to go. And right now, uh, sideways is um, what we're doing. All right. I know a few things that I'm looking to do. UPS is something I'm trying to add to my IRA. If I get it in my IRA, then I'm going to add to my uh, margin account as well. My margin account's pretty close, uh, but there's not a whole lot of economic data or not a whole lot of sorry earnings coming out so uh, we don't have anything really today tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon so I decided to maybe try and add a few things there so I'm trying to play this to the upside um, and I'm about a nickel away so in UPS I'm trying to sell the March uh, 99 puts and then buy the 85 puts for defined risk I'm trying to sell it for about 50 cents it's trading about 45 so I'm about a nickel away this bit of a rally is not helping me. I've tried to chase it for a little while and I've decided to kind of let it breathe a little bit. So looking to play UPS to the upside. I think it's just overdone. They didn't miss on their earnings that bad. And XOM is still a conundrum. Um, I was expecting this to get a little bit more of a bounce than it is. I'd like to play XOM to the upside. So I'm looking to sell the March again, 72 puts and then define that risk by buying the 65 puts. Trying to get it for 31 cents. It's trading about 27, so I'm a little bit away on that one. I started out at around 39, 40 cents, and I've chased it down. Again, uh, the market moving higher. I felt like I was chasing it. I'm going to let it breathe, maybe get a little bit of pullback in the market uh, to enter that trade. So just a couple working orders at places that I'm comfortable getting into. And Netflix, got directional move. A little bit of all coming out of this. Um if you guys remember on this Netflix trade, I put this on and um, uh, it wasn't very long ago. It was basically on the 15th, so about six days ago. We've got this directional move uh, on on the Netflix trade. Basically put it on on the 15th, so I got confirmation to the upside after this big move. We have rallied up. Again, getting real sloppy up here, but looking very tweezer top-ish. Again, 
Don't know if it's going to be able to break through there, but I'm looking to cover this trade for a little bit better than 50% of my max profit. If you guys remember in the March, I sold the 230 puts in there for about $1.22. They're trading about 37, 40 cents. Uh, I'm trying to get out for 25 cents, so well better than 50% of my max profit. Trying to squeeze this out a little bit because I got that directional move nicely and uh, trying to work back some of those losses on a couple of those earnings trades. So I'm squeezing some of these out for a little bit better than 50% of my max profit because they're working out so well. And then um, Netflix, uh, UPS, XOM. Do I have XOM on here? Uh, I'll just switch over to XOM. I don't know why this is IWM, but XOM is another one that I'm looking to get into. And I believe I may have already talked about this. Um, XOM, I, I, it's just overdone to the downside. So I'm looking at adding some positive deltas to this that I've already talked about. All right. So that's about it for today. Friday's webinar is going to be on the butterfly. Great strategy for an entry level trader, especially when we get these consolidations like this. This is winding up really tight. We expect it to blast off in some direction or the other, but we don't really know which direction. We just think it's going to snap. That's going to be the time to put on this long butterfly. And I'm going to show you how to set that up to increase your probabilities of success. When's the right environment for something like that? All right. So check it out at ProTraderStrategies.com. And if you can't take that, take it easy.